Welcome back to Shotgun Studio Podcast. This is episode eight. Chris is back with us again in this episode. Woo woo. Yep. And if uh, you recognize him from our main podcast, the Workbench After Hours Podcast, we always try a different whiskey every week. So we went ahead and brought that over to this podcast. We're not going to do the full review like we do, but <laughs> for those interested, we are drinking Whistle Pig, the piggyback six year. Yeah. Definitely rye and spice. Yes, definitely spicy, but it's good. What was it, our 50 episode anniversary that we had the Whistle Pig 10 year rye? Yeah. It was really good. So I'm like, really ah, smooth let's try this compared one. to that. Yeah. That one's a whoo. Completely you, different. Because uh, that's a rye. This is just your typical bourbon. Yeah, that's totally different. It is. <laughs> well, this week in this, I, want, I guess not week because this isn't a weekly podcast anymore, yeah. but in this episode, I wanted to talk about AI, have a conversation about AI. Ooh, ooh. Because there's. Good things, which we're going to talk about, especially for creators, small creators like me that is doing it solo. But then there's also what's looking like could be a dark side. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a dark side of AI. Yeah, and I think we're just now trying to, you know, seeing some of that. Everybody initially like, oh, this is cool, it's cool, and pushed it out. And now it's like, okay. Yeah, they need. A, I think they need to govern it in some way. Yeah, because this is it's coming on pretty quick. Yeah. So... The, what brought this up is uh, Riverside FM, if you guys haven't heard of them. Normally, we record all of our videos and podcasts in Ecamm Live, and that's great. It's pretty much a Mac-only software, but it makes it really good for recording, whether you're doing just normal YouTube videos or a podcast like this, because you can control everything as you're recording. But the downside to that software is when you're doing a virtual interview, they do have that mode. But the two or three times that we've done it, person we were interviewing, their signal was really bad. Yeah, and it kind of was hard to uh, catch on to what they were saying because it was in and out a lot. Yeah. One of the good ones, mm -hmm. and we were excited to have, and it was a really good podcast, but it's so difficult to listen to. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't know if it was because she had a bad internet connection or if it was something to do with Ecamm, but it just, her side audio was just cutting in and out really bad. Riverside FM has kind of fixed that. So what they do is they record directly to our computer in a file, like a cloud, and then directly to their computer. And then it uploads to the Riverside studio that you're in. And then that way you have great audio and video. It may come out a little spotty during the actual recording, but that's just to save you know compression and everything mm -hmm. like that. But the actual final product will come out perfect. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I wish we would have had that yeah. during those interviews. We'll just have to redo those, I guess. Yep. The downside so far I have found to Riverside is it's not as feature-packed in the recording as Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live, I can change like the LUTs so I can adjust the colors without having to do that in post, and I can't zoom in. Hmm. So at Ecamm Live, we typically have the camera just set up, and then I can zoom in depending on how many people we have on the podcast or what we're doing. You can really set the frame on it. Mm -hmm. So this, it is what you set it up as. <laughs> and I can't change scenes. I can't really add anything. So I could always do like a share screen and have that going up. Can't really do that. On can't here. do it like with the stream deck. Yeah. Cam. Can't really use the stream deck on this. Oh. That I can see so far. Maybe there's. Got to play with it more. Maybe. Yeah, I got to play with more. This, <laughs> bar. this is really the first uh, thing we're recording in Riverside. And what I want to test out is after this podcast is they have a new feature that is the uh, basically a maker for short form content. Hmm. And it's a new AI feature that they just recently came out with. And this is part of the good AI yeah. that I want to talk about because this is going to help small creators like myself or even larger creators. It's taking long form content and turning it into short form for all the different social media, it's very time consuming. Yeah, and then trying to, okay, which clip's gonna be the best, and then it, if this does everything for you. Yeah. It'll make it so much easier. Yeah, in Riverside, after you record, you basically go to the section for the uh, clips, and it'll automatically generate uh, what it thinks is the best kind of one minute or less clips, and it'll create a whole bunch of them for you and just have them ready to go. And then you can change the format. So depending on if you wanna to go to Instagram, TikTok, it can change the format, especially if you have an interviewer, you could put yourself side by side, up and down. 
Hmm. Change the format, which is really cool. And then you can add captions. Because if you've ever, like we normally do, we would record this in uh, Ecamm Live, upload it to Final Cut Pro, edit the podcast. And then to take that in the short form, I have to listen through the whole thing, kind of <laughs> like, all right, that's a cool thing I want to do, you know. And then I have to create a whole new file and yeah. save that and then upload it. And then adding captions, you have to do through a completely different software. And then it's it's very, very time consuming. It's crazy because I know like here recently I've been messing with PowerPoint a lot. Uh -huh. And like you can have it where as you're speaking and giving the PowerPoint, it'll do your captioning for you. And I was like, that's nice. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And I was See? like, why don't we have this on everything? <laughs> exactly. So another good thing that you can use AI for. Yeah. But so I want to see what this does. I want to see our conversation about AI, how AI takes that conversation about <laughs> AI and edits it. <laughs> Edit yourself on about yourself. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll see how that turns out. So, but and then I'll do a full kind of video on how I'm doing that. And it's really easy. It's basically a one click uh, to edit into shorts. And then you can hit another button to add the captions. Change. I think there's two different fonts so far. It's available in a hundred different languages. Oh, wow. So yeah. that could be kind of useful. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's like, if it doesn't get it quite right, you can edit out the words. Or if you don't want a word in there, you just delete it and it'll take that part out. Because I know cool. like, who was, I think Mr. Beast, I was watching him do a podcast and they were talking about why he's so successful. And he found out like everyone was watching his videos, but then he started like, I guess you can realize where, where you're getting watched at in the most region. Mm -hmm. and he's watching like other countries watch him and he has millions and billions of views, but he's like, how do they understand me? So he got someone to go in and like translate and do captioning so they can understand him. And I was like, that is freaking genius. Right. So that would be awesome if this does that. Yeah. It's all about the analytics. Yeah. Unfortunately. It is. It's a Which numbers is, game. Yeah. That's and you are a YouTube creator, you know, analytics can either be really awesome or really uh, <laughs> hurt you. Yes. It's like, oh, man, because every time you put out a video, it ranks it one to ten out of your last videos. One yep. being the best performing video out of your last ten. And then obviously ten out of ten is your worst. So a lot of times with mine, it's uh, five or ten out of ten. <laughs> it's like, dang. And it depends and it changes um, depending on how much time goes by. So yeah, watching those analytics really sucks, <laughs> but you can use it to help and see what audience likes are watching. Yeah. Kind of go from there and see what videos are performing. Well, maybe do some more stuff like that. Yeah. And Mr. Beast, man, I can't imagine editing his stuff. Oh, I know. It's all over the place. And it, I know he does it to keep your attention. So it's not just one shot yeah. just like this. It's all over the place. Yep. Yeah. My kids love it. Really? And I'm like, why? I mean, I've watched so many Mr. Beast just because of the kids. And then I was listening to a podcast. He's like, I'm one of the poorest YouTubers here. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then he started talking about that. And I was like, that makes sense. And you are smart for figuring that out. Yep. One other cool thing about uh, Riverside is, other than this AI stuff that came out, is you can actually re basically edit your podcast or video in their software. And it's web-based. So it's not like an app you launch. It's on yeah. the web. I just log in through my Google account and go to my studio. And then it also has an area for all your recordings. Once you hit stop, it uploads it and then takes it to your recordings and you can edit it right then and there, like the whole thing. And then you can export it and upload it to YouTube or whatever, or even your own huh. editing software and tweak it a little bit, add the like subscribe buttons and stuff like that. So, so it's like... One stop shop, pretty much. Yeah, if you have a basic thing and you don't have like a lot of stuff you want to add in, this is all you need. Really, mm. is is Riverside. You can edit in here, launch it, export it. You're good to go. You can use a mixer. You can use whatever camera. You just select whatever video and audio source you're doing, mm. and yeah, it's pretty cool. Interesting. And it has automatic noise reduction that you can turn on. So usually we don't need that because this is a pretty quiet room. Yeah. And you don't need that. But if you're in a loud environment and don't want to do that and say like Final Cut Pro or your editing software, they have that just toggle that button on and it'll help reduce some of the background noise. Oh, that's crazy. It is. <laughs> and I forgot about that because 
every episode on Shotgun Studio, I talk about what microphone we're using. Oh. It's been a while since I've come out with an episode. Yeah. So I'm like, because we always talk about if you make it past seven, you're good. Yeah. I hit seven and I got super busy. <laughs> so I'm like, let's do an eighth one. So yeah. um, I am using the Lewitt LCT240 Pro condenser mic. I really love this thing. All of this is going through the Rodecaster Pro 2. I have this on the Rode NT1 setting. It's a preset that Rode has on here. I just selected that. And Chris, it looks like a Shure SM7B, but it is not. That's what I was about to ask. I was nope. like, it looks like it. Nope. That is the Shure SM7X. X. Yeah. They have a one that is the Shure SM7, and it's USB or like XLR. Obviously, this one's just XLR only. It's a little bit cheaper. And... I took the stock foam pop filter off and put the one that's made for the Shure SM7B on there because it does sound a little bit better with that on there. Yeah, because I was like, it looks like that. And I was like, I'll probably <laughs> be wrong if I say it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you would have been right. You would have just been one letter off. Dang it. Yes. But it, it sounds pretty close to a Shure SM7B at a much cheaper price. Yeah. It's that's yep. Shure SM7B new is like 400 bucks. That. Depending on if you get it on sale, like 160, 150. Oh, man. For the X. If you get the one that has both USB and XLR, it's a little more expensive. Yeah. Because that one comes with like LED lights and stuff. Or if you want to just, because that one you could plug it just into your computer without using a mixer. A mixer. Yeah. So that's all the fanciness. I know. I know. So good things with AI helps small creators do cut out a lot of extra work. Pretty entertaining to watch some stuff that people do. But you have been watching some stuff and <clears throat> following some stuff to where it's not... It's not all. Not all great. Yeah. So, like, during... Especially during my master's, <clears throat> we talked a lot about AI. Like, my class, we talked about society and technology and the growth of it and, like, things that have changed a lot. And we, AI was a major topic in it. So we talked about the good things of AI, like resume writing, things like that, with chat GPT, which I've messed with a little bit. And it, it works. You got to kind of fine read it and everything. But uh, we talked a lot about the bad and like how we should probably be governing it mm -hmm. because eventually AI is going to get so smart, it's not going to listen to us. And it's like pretty scary. We're like, we're like they were talking about like if AI takes over, it can take over a jet and just fly it where it wants to because it thinks it's the boss and it knows everything more than you. And I was like, oh, uh, that's really scary. And I was like, especially if you start weaponizing it into like military stuff, like drones, like whew, that'd be even scarier. It takes over a full drone and just attacks where it wants. And I think of, I look at it too, like at IT, like cybersecurity, we're always worried about cy people getting into the like firewalls and hacking us what's stopping ai how can we even track ai if it does that like we mm -hmm. can't really track that no and it's going to be instant yeah it's going to happen so fast and like you have a hacker and it's going to take them a while to do that versus ai will do that in a second if that yeah so it's like that and i'm like it's kind of scary to think about it in that way but there's nothing stopping it from doing it because we haven't set rules and regulations in place. No, and there's all these companies coming out out with all this different AI and, and stuff. Like yeah. you got ChatGTP that's specifically for that, but then you got companies doing things yeah. that are like Google. I think they said he had, like that guy is like the grandfather of AI, mm -hmm. and he's like, we're at a point where we cannot stop it. And I was like, oh, that's scary. It's ever learning. Yeah, it's always going to learn and keep learning. And, like, you're starting to see it slowly on, like, some of these Facebook, like, they're mimicking people, getting their voice and making it sound like them, look like them. And it's mm -hmm. just like, is that real? Is it not real? What should I believe? Yep. You start questioning. We talked a little bit about this on our main podcast, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was that long ago. Maybe, I don't even know if it was six months ago, but we talked about when chat GTP had just started becoming a thing in the news. Yeah. I didn't know about it until I started seeing some people talk about it on the news, YouTube, and then you mentioned it. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. But then all of a sudden, it seemed like all this AI stuff just popped out of, oh, out yeah. of nowhere. Like you have all these softwares like Riverside and 
everywhere is just doing some sort of AI. Mm-hmm. And I watched a podcast with Colin and Shamir, and they interviewed this guy because I was, you know, you're going through TikToks and stuff yeah. like that. And I was watching these ones that I honestly thought was Tom Cruise. The guy looked like and sounded like Tom Cruise, just a little bit younger because I know how old he is now and and kind of that stuff. But he was doing this weird just, I don't know, because he's all about doing stunts and everything. But I'm like, this is kind of weird. And uh, But it looked like Tom Cruise. Yep. Well, turns out that there is a guy, I forget his name. He's an actor. He started off doing some acting stuff, but he had a hard time because he looks like Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. So he kind of really got into that character and he could act like and talk like Tom Cruise pretty good. He still didn't look quite like him, but he did you know, close enough to yeah. be a stunt double. Yeah. So he started doing some TikToks where it was just him acting like Tom Cruise and you could tell it really wasn't Tom Cruise, but an impersonator. Well, some uh, software person, I forgot where this guy was from, but he saw that and he reached out to him and they, he had developed this software, this AI And he took this uh, guy's TikToker's face. I can't remember his name. He's known as the deep fake Tom Cruise. (laughs) But uh, they took his face and overlaid it with Tom Cruise. Yeah. And they changed the voice. The match. Because Tom Cruise's voice is all over the internet. So the stuff that he was doing actually now with the AI on there looked and sounded like it was actually Tom Cruise. Yeah, that's scary. Like... I also was, I heard, uh, they were talking about like chat GBT and like people were like, all right, Metallica hasn't come out with a song in so many years or finding like your favorite band, tell chat GBT to like read all these lyrics and then write you a new song for Mm -hmm. Metallica. So it's taking people's jobs at like writing and editing and things like that because it does everything. And that's why there's a strike now in Hollywood because all the actors and the writers are going on strike because they don't want AI to take their job. Yeah. And I was listening to uh, Buzzsprout, which is our podcast host, has a podcast. And I was listening to one today about fake podcasts. And what AI is doing is there's a way to where it's making fake podcasts. That's crazy. And, like, it, you can have AI write a book for you. Yeah. Like, it'll listen to your podcast and, and your videos and stuff like that and actually write a book that you can sell. That's, that's nuts. It is. That'd be really crazy. So it's it's taking a lot of work out of stuff, so, which is kind of good. But at the same time, it's like you buy this book about, oh, how to create a YouTube channel from somebody that, you know, you watch a lot of their stuff and you like it. Well, you read this book. It's not actually written by them. It's written by AI. Yep. Yeah. How much of that is true? How much of it is false? How much was done by the actual person versus the AI? See, that's, that'd be, because I know I was hearing about this as I was graduating, like people were starting to use it for writing papers and you can tell AI, hey, write me this paper on this topic. It needs to be so many words. I want it to have, oh, let's say 75% error. So it looks like it's legitimate. And then they just copy and paste it, put it in Word, turn it in. Man, I was like, wow. I wish I would have been born a little bit later yeah. school would have been so much easier i mean school is easier now than when we went to oh, co- yeah. the college but i was just like well, that is crazy could you imagine having ai write your dissertation for your doctorate i remember this kind of ages us a little bit <laughs> but there's a point in time where we couldn't do any research on computers because yep. it wasn't there so we actually still had to use encyclopedias yeah and well, encyclopedias were constantly being updated yep. too so if you go to one and it said, oh, Pluto's a planet. And then the next version comes out, Pluto's not a planet. Yeah. (laughs) You got to be careful there too. Yeah. It's, and kids these days, I mean, there were a couple of times in high school and college where they were like, you cannot cite anything from online. You have to cite an actual book. Yeah. Which I think they should do now because anybody, especially with all this AI. You don't know what to believe anymore. Oh. Like, and even like I, when I was doing like my intro, intro to research writing, they made it where you couldn't take anything from magazines. It had to be scholarly work. So you had to go find people's dissertations and take that and cite that dissertation. And I was like, this is a pain in the butt. Because mm-hmm. there's a couple articles and a couple magazines that would look, went well with my paper, but I couldn't use it because it wasn't scholarly and it was a magazine. 
And I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> but it really taught you about going and finding other research and how to do it. And then it's a good. Now that AI is around, I was like, how do you prove this? That's the thing. Because yeah. I know even I was messing around with it with my resumes. I was like, here's the job that I want, the job description. Here's my two resumes. Make me a, a resume to fit this job description. Mm -hmm. And it was making up titles for like my previous job descriptions. I was like, what? I didn't even have that job title. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> like, what is that? I, so I had to go back and still edit it, but it's crazy. Yeah. And it's, you know, everybody loves scrolling through TikTok and all this stuff and seeing these memes of people. Uh, we like the one with Joe Biden and Trump. Yeah. Well, what AI is doing now, and it's going to be really hard to tell what's, what's, what? what's true and what's not, is if it... I forgot what the program is, but if it'll do research and if your like our videos and our voices are on the internet for it to find, it can basically t take any video and use our face and, and voice yep. and make whatever it wants to. <laughs> That's really scary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we I've seen some of, you know, Trump and Biden and you could tell it's a little it's off. fake, but it sounds a lot like them. Yep. And we we know that Biden can't make complete sentences like that, but yeah. it, it was. But the scary thing is that's out there. And I've seen some weird stuff to where there's some sort of AI that will make your deceased family member come to life. And you could basically have a conversation with that. Oh, that'd be crazy. That's weird. And I think that's where it comes into uh, you have to have like the voice recording of that person yeah. to put it to that. And then you know, maybe even pictures or videos, and then it creates its own the deceased family member. Oh. And that would just, that's just, that'd be creepy. I think that's too far. Yeah. That's, I think, I really do think it does need to be governed. Like I know with like robotics, they have like the three rules, they even say it in like iRobot, thou shall not kill and whatnot. Mm -hmm. AI should have almost like similar guidelines. It cannot kill. It cannot overtake. It cannot mimic or disguise. I think it needs to be governed in some type of way. But there's different... It's not like there's just one AI. Yeah, I mean, there's all multiples. these. But I think they need to do it because people are making AI and starting it. There needs to be guidelines on what they can and can't do. Well, it's kind of like law. You can't yeah. murder, but people still do it anyway. Yeah. So... But with, well, with, with murder, AI you can go fine. <laughs> AI is going to be hard to prove, you know? Yeah. That's the biggest thing. But if this continues to where it's taking you know, what people are saying and doing online and then creating something else of them saying something that they never said or did. Yeah. When it comes to like court and stuff like that, we're like, oh, we have this video of you saying this stuff or this recording of you saying this. Is it really them or not? Yeah. That'd... And if you say you killed somebody, we're on trial for murder. And for whatever reason, this AI voice of you is out there confessing to a murder. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that... going to be... <laughs> Oh my gosh. And, but how do you, like, what evidence? How is that going to be? It'd know? have to be more than just verbal at that point. They're going to have to have, like, oh, it can't just make up, here's the knife that I killed him with, with the DNA on it, you know? Right. That'd but, be the hardest part, I think. Yeah. Because then it's really taking your, your name and your likeness and using it against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And seeing all this stuff with the politicians as memes, as funny as it is, what's to stop, you know, say it's Trump versus Biden and say somebody on Trump's team wants to make a commercial and they actually take, have AI recreate Biden doing something that he actually never did yeah, and, or vice versa and puts that on the commercial. How do you prove that is or isn't Joe Biden other than them being like, Oh, that's not us. Yeah. But, but politicians always say, I never said that. <laughs> yeah. You they know? always lie. They right. lie right to your face. So then how do you know? Yeah, that's that's, that, that's the crazy part. I think that's something we got to look for in upcoming elections and stuff like that. Yeah, the, I wonder if there's a like, you know, like a back program where it can tell, but hey, this has been altered or changed in some way. I wonder if they could do something like that and be like, oh no, this was altered. We could tell, and nope, can't be aired or yeah. something. Well, because at the end of those, it always says, you know, this is sponsored it, by or approved by. Uh, I'm that Joe. Person. I'm Trump, and I approve this message. Hey, I can easily Joe make Biden. That. Yeah. How hard is that? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, 
it's I, I think there's there's good there, but there's also a lot of bad and a lot of uncertainty with AI. And it's who I don't know. Thank God I'm not a teacher now. Right. <laughs> Having to teach right. this stuff. Yeah, because I mean, as as cool as it is to with chat GTP, if you're looking to write a script for a video, like a YouTube video, yeah. that's cool that it can do that. It's good with helping resume writing. But that is going to take jobs away. Oh, it is. TV and movie writers, uh, book writers, authors. It could yeah. write a freaking, like write a novel on, <laughs> you know, whatever. Write another Game of Thrones series. Yeah. It could probably throw out some good books. Yeah. It, I know, what was it? I was. I think it was another podcast I was listening to, and this guy literally was like, he had, he had like a lawyer on, he was paying, and he went to GPT to ask a question, and he kept that. And then he went and asked his lawyer the same thing, and it wrote, said the exact same thing that AI did on ChatGPT. He's like, okay, we're done. <laughs> I just, instead of paying you $300 for this 10-minute phone call, I did it for free and got the exact same answer. Mm-hmm. That, like, it's going to take lawyers away from people. Yeah. And I've also heard people, like, trying to use that as lawyers, and they get disbarred because they make up evidence. Yeah. Which is, that's scary, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of of bad ways that it can go. Yeah. But there's companies like Riverside and others that are making it beneficial to creators. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I want to use it to a point. Like I don't want it to write my videos. I don't want it to do the scripts or anything. As cool as that is, I I, I don't really even write a script myself when I'm doing videos. <laughs> I just have an idea of what I want to talk about. And then we just That's, talk about it. <laughs> yeah. But when I'm doing like a like a microphone review. I have some bullet points in my head and some mic, uh, mic comparisons I want to do, but I don't write a script. I don't write anything down. I just go. It's probably why it takes me forever to record, but yeah. and I mess up a lot, but it's authentic versus, you know, if AI does it, sure, it could be really well, but it's not you actually being that creative person doing that. Yeah. And I don't know. I think to a certain point, as long as it's helpful and it makes... It's streamlined, like in this instance, you know, taking our long form, turning it into short form. Great, because all it's doing is just taking parts of our clips yeah. and not changing those and not changing what we say or anything like that. It's just shorten them down so we can throw them out on different social media platforms quicker Yeah, and a lot better. Yeah, I think that there is a lot of useful tip tools with it, but there's also a lot of things that we need to be leery about and kind of question. Right. Like, you know how Hunter was on a lot of our podcasts until he had a, a baby and can't yeah. be on them anymore. Well, what if we had somebody create a Hunter AI and there's a, it basically sits in the middle of us. Goes through the, all the episodes that he was on and can somehow make him a character, like a, what do yeah. they call those? The uh, AI Anima- um, animated character. Yeah, whatever. But it can look pretty close and it'll sound exactly like him. Or if we just do an audio only one, it sounds like he's there having a conversation with us, but it's actually AI. That'd be creepy. That would be. But it's I'm sure that's something <laughs> oh, that's sure if it it's is. not there, it's probably pretty close to being there. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Cause there's a bunch of like I've watched so many shorts on like Facebook and YouTube and there's ones now that I'm getting like a lot of biblical ones and it's like this prophecy and it's an AI guy and it looks like it's real. And the lips are the only thing moving, but mm-hmm. it's giving you like full fledged facts from the Bible, and it's creepy, right? Because it's like, man, if that face could move just a little bit more with the mouth, oh my God, you couldn't tell if it's a real person or not. Yeah, and because it learns that person that you want it to yeah. recreate, so it's it's going to actually learn how Hunter talks and how he yeah. does things, and that's how it's going to actually spit out his AI, <sighs> and it's going to be like. We're having a conversation with Hunter, but it's actually an AI or a computer or something. But it's going to act and sound like Hunter because it learned from his behavior yeah. behavior on the actual podcasts. Yeah, that'd be nuts. Which is crazy. Yeah, that's mind-blowing to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, so, what's to stop? And I know there's there's all these like YouTube channels. Like If you look up a product, because most people started off looking up products on YouTube, and that's what they a lot of people do now. Yeah. You want to say... You know, you're looking at like a vacuum cleaner, let's say. Well, then you run across these computer-generated YouTube accounts that you could tell it's a computer just spitting off all this stuff about it, but it's like a video with all this stuff, and it has like all these links, and I hate those because it's like this is just a computer doing this channel. Well, 
AI is actually kind of doing that now with the fake podcasts. And I'm sure there's a lot of fake AI, like TikTok accounts, oh, Twitter sure. accounts, whatever. And it's going to get to the point to where it's going to learn whoever it's trying to recreate so good that you're not going to be able to tell who's who. Yeah. It's like, uh, what's that? Netflix had a documentary probably a year or two ago. And it was talking about like Facebook and Google and how they're using AI. Did you watch that one? Was that the social dilemma? Maybe where it was in there like, and it was fabricating things and it was texting for you. AI. I think so. That that really creeped me out. Like how I was like, oh, you're so close to this person. Let me send them a like, even though you might have not have liked it. Right. I was like, who do you trust? Like, what do you believe anymore? Like, is that really a girl? Like, it's crazy. Well, did you ever see the movie Jexy? I don't think I have. It's with, oh, God, I can't remember. His name is Adam something. You would recognize him. He's like the weird guy. He was in um, the Pitch Perfects. He was kind of the nerdy guy i don't know i think i know who you're talking but about anyway he's in it so it's called jexy because it's about this guy that's addicted to being on his phone so instead of it's kind of like apple and siri but yeah they couldn't because of copyright so they, it was jexy and this ai phone basically took over his entire life like i forgot what happened or how it turned like that came about but it controlled everything. So like if he pissed off his phone, it would send out like it sent out like pictures of himself to his coworkers oh, shit. and stuff like that. And it, set, it made it seem like it was coming from him. He would email back like, say, his this girl that he was wanting to get with because his phone was jealous. It would it would really completely screw up his that life. Would, that would be crazy. Yeah. And the, like he could <laughs> like his phone was controlling his life. And learned his behaviors and stuff. And then it had access to his bank accounts, all the social media, oh, the internet, man. his emails. And so it was uh, it was, it was funny, but it's like... You, you can know, see that happening. That could actually happen. Yeah. Like, oh, what the God? Yeah. I was watching, of course, YouTube. I was like, they're talking about the Philadelphia project that the Navy did. You ever heard about that? Mm. I guess it was like some... They're trying to make it use, I think, what was it? Newton's. And they're trying to make it a warship, like go invisible. They think there's a couple people on there. They say that they time traveled. They went like 800 to like years in the future. And they said that one of the reasons why the world collapsed, the United States did is that AI took over like a Roomba and started taking over things. I was like, that is scary. And then he's like, and then it flash forward him again, another 800 years. And there was no war at all. There's peace. And there was no electronics. We're like back in the stone ages again. And then he got pushed right back to where he was. Huh. It was weird. I, I, I It was a YouTube thing because I've heard of the Philadelphia Project. And I was like, I've never really researched it. And I've heard a couple of times now about time traveling that people say that they time traveled during that. And I was like. Uh, it's kind of like all those people that said they saw aliens and the government's like, no. Yeah. You're crazy. Well, guess what the government's saying? Yeah. Now? We got, there is UFOs. There's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's who I don't can know. you trust now? Okay, yeah, you gonna... can't like. So it's that's oh, it's just scary that you think that this thing that you can't see or control could take over anything at any point. Uh huh. And like, you want to talk about mayhem? I bet but we got these smart cars. We're soon gonna be having self driving cars. Yep. Uh, we speak to a. What is that thing that you speak to when it controls like your lights and stuff oh, like, like that? Home automation, Siri, yeah. Alexas and all that. Yeah, Google It's already homes. controlling stuff. But I think if like an AI software gets in there, it can really. Oh, and that's kind of where like, you know, there's hackers doing all this stuff. People are hacking into cars and that baby monitors they are hacking into baby monitors right. if they're hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Because that was one thing when we had our kids. I was like, I don't want anything that's Wi-Fi for baby monitor. Just use good old freaking. Yeah. If a person can do that. It takes nothing for AI. AI to do that. Yeah, And, you know, the whole thing is, oh, the next war is going to be a cyber war. I don't think it's going to be cyber. I think it's going to be AI. Exactly. And then we don't know who to trust. Was it our government that did it? Was it another government that did it? Like, you can't track it. Or was it our own AI yeah. that we created? It's yeah, that's scary. Yeah, that was, the, that was like the main topic in our 
talking about like AI and they're using drones and AI is taking over and shooting down things. I was like, uh, but how do you control it? So say you write parameters that it can't do this stuff. Yeah. How's there a way? Because you know, with us, people always try and find a loophole yeah. or a way I'm around sure it, something. I'm sure it's finding loopholes. Yeah. So it's going to find a loophole to get around that and then learn and grow on that. And then it's like, how do you track it down and stop it? Mm-hmm. And then, update like firmware like you can't that's that's the biggest thing i'm scared about is like ai coming in taking over like a power plant or a water treatment plant screw everything up yeah because people do that now yeah uh the u.s gets so many cyber attacks on like that type pipelines of stuff. and yeah. things like that yeah. but wait till like they do like a water treatment facility or an electrical grid like yeah you, we can actually have ai write us a, a book or a script on how to hack into oh, something i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure it could it probably <laughs> and then you like if you want to learn something but youtube has it's something that goes against their community guidelines you could probably have ai write it and give you video tips and they should it'll probably make a video at it, this point yeah it could probably give you a step-by-step instruction how to yeah. do something you're not supposed to yeah i mean if it's writing songs for bands and things mm-hmm. like that and yeah it's just real leery it is you got to kind of watch it but yeah. it'll be interesting. I think it, there's a lot of good with it, but there's also a lot of bad. So yes. just pick your poison. Yep, it is. <laughs> it is. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. So if you guys want to check out Riverside.fm, the website, that's the website, Riverside.fm, check it out. Um, I'll have a link in the description below. They do have a free plan, but if you do sign up, I'll have a code. I think it's Shotgun Studio or something. It'll be down in the description below where you can actually save 10% off your membership. Yeah, check it out if uh, you want to record podcasts. If you had some issues like uh, we had with uh, trying to record somebody that's remote and had a bad signal or service, this should alleviate that for you. So try it out. It's pretty cool. Not as many options so far to edit as you go, like Ecamm Live. I'm sure they'll probably get there, though, with yeah. it. They'll probably look and compare. Well, especially like Ecamm Live doesn't have all the AI stuff yeah. that you can do too. They're probably so. going to be learning from each other. Yeah, we'll see. It's like what Miles Davis says, I'm not copying, I'm just making it my own. Yep. <laughs> That's what AI might do. Yeah. It's like, I'm not copying you, Chris, but I'm making my own form of you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. AI, yeah. you cannot copy me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't copy you. I just... Um, I mimicked you. They're going to trademark you. Yeah. Before you trademark yourself. I'm already trademarked. <laughs> you don't know it. Go find it. <laughs> yeah. So let us know in the comments kind of your thoughts on AI. What are some cool features that you guys think are out there um, that would be good for creators uh, kind of like us and make yeah. the job a little bit easier, but not... Let us know if you use yeah. Riverside. That'd be awesome to see like, <laughs> yeah. what other people are using. Yeah, so we're definitely going to try it for the podcast, especially if we do remote guests and do the AI stuff. I wish that I could upload podcasts that we've created outside of Riverside. But I won't let you Into know. Riverside so they can do the thing. But no, it has to be recorded oh, dang. in Riverside. But that's okay because they have a free version. And hmm. yeah, for you guys, they're a pro... F- I think the AI stuff comes with the paid plan, but check it out. That'll be interesting. Keep on code down below. So yeah. Yeah. So I'll have a video coming out shortly after this podcast on that. So we'll see how it kind of does that. If you see some uh, YouTube shorts or whatever, that's all going to be AI generated from this podcast. So I'm interested to see how AI. Me too. (laughs) Because we're talking about the AI. Yeah. So we'll see. See if I have to. I am going to have to edit the podcast because I just totally smacked the crap out of my microphone. And this is not a good uh, one for that. <laughs> like the Shore SM7B, you can hit that thing and it, yeah, sound doesn't come through. This thing, you hit it, you're going to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I still love the sound of this mic, though. It's a good mic. Yep. You know what's funny before we sign off? So when I was doing like a lot of research on YouTube and you have to have the right niche yeah. for your videos... So it's funny because I did that studio tour video and initially put it on our Boomstick channel yep. because that's where we were doing the podcast mainly. And I did the tour of the studio, what I use and all this stuff. It got 56 views. <laughs> I took that off of that channel and put it up on this channel and it's gotten thousands of views. Interesting. So it's definitely, uh, even like if, 
that video should show up if you're searching for, you know, a studio setup, like a yeah. whatever. But for whatever reason, it was not getting those type of views I think on the YouTube's Boomstick channel. AI is blocking it from that Probably. channel. Probably. But that's like more of a gun, motorcycle, whiskey channel. Yep. Whereas this is more of production. Production and that technology. that related to that. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if it's because it wasn't getting recommended to the channel it was coming from and the subscribers or what, but it's just weird. I just changed which channel I put it on. And all of a sudden it's getting all just these Just put videos. everything on both channels. Who haven't? <sighs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> it, I mean, still no... Yeah. Not many views on Boomstick, so it's yep. I wish you could just have a YouTube channel and do whatever you want. That'd be nice. Yeah. And if you don't want to watch a video, don't click on it. On a gun, but you do want to see one on a microphone, don't click on the gun, one click on the microphone. Though. Yeah. I mean, you can technically do that. Your channel's just not going to grow. Yeah. Which so sucks. Maybe I can have AI figure out a way for, I can do that. AI find a way for this <laughs> channel to take off. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> cool well i think uh that'll wrap it up for today i'm sure there's gonna be a lot more conversations about ai oh as yeah more and more stuff comes out for the good and maybe the worst yep so we'll see only time will tell that's for sure yeah well chris you sent us out of our main podcast why don't you sign us off here remember this is a youtube podcast remember to like subscribe and tickle that bell if you're listening on all the other platforms and you want to listen to more hit that follow button yep right now this podcast is only available on youtube okay i took it off spotify and all that stuff because it was expensive all right so just go on youtube then <laughs> yeah. and listen to us sorry yeah. about that yeah no i'll try and actually <laughs> uh do it there's a free uh host i'm gonna try and do okay just to save money because running YouTube channel is expensive. Yep. So yeah, watch this one on YouTube. Yeah. And if you want to sponsor us on any other things, let us know. Exactly. With that one, have a good one, everyone.